Welcome to Level Review, where we critique levels from classic Nintendo games. In this video, we continue our look at an all-time classic, Banjo-Kazooie. We've already reviewed the mediocre trash heap that is Mumbo's Mountain, and the absolute treasure that is Treasure Trove Cove. Next up though, is a level so nasty, so filthy, that even Lindsay Lohan stays away from it. That level is the sexy, the seductive, Clanker's Cavern. Now, I'll try and say this in the most delicate way possible. Clanker's Cavern is fucked! Take a look at this shit, it's a horror show. There's spinning blades of death, mutant crabs, bondage chains? Hmm, okay, that one's kinda hot. And to top it off, we have the mayor of this horror show from hell, Clanker. Clanker is a mechanical whale shark thing that Gwentilda the Witch conveniently uses as her trash compactor. Just look at this fucking thing, it's an abomination. Like I'm not even sure what's going on here, is this thing alive? It has like open wounds and shit. What kind of E-rated Nintendo game has gore like this? Apparently fucking Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> I mean, it comes from the same franchise that thought it was cool to have a fornicating penis as part of the level design, or a gay bar with sexually suggestive food items. Let's be honest, you ain't seen Clanker Mario 64. And you better not be seeing Seaman's fucking surprise. Whoa! So, aside from being an assault on all five senses, Clanker's actually a pretty cool guy. I know the level's called Clanker's Cavern, but Clanker himself is the centerpiece of the level. Everything you do in the level revolves around Clanker. The first thing you have to do with custy old Clanker is to loosen off his chain, so he can float above the hepatitis water that inhabits his cavern. To do this, you have to swim down and turn his key three times. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. So wrong. Because while you're doing this, your air meter is dropping every second. And it's a long way down. And turning this key is a bitch. The hitbox is super wonky, and the underwater controls on Banjo-Kazooie are complete ass. This nice little fish drops air bubbles for you that refill your air meter. But the bubbles are that classic N64 2D fucking JPEG in a 3D world, so it's impossible to judge where they are accurately. So you end up swimming around like a jackass trying to collect these bubbles just to die anyways. So. Once you loosen Clanker off from his set's dungeon restraints, he floats to the surface of his glorious cavern. And this is where the level gets interesting. Just the act of having Clanker surface above the diarrhea water completely opens up the level. It allows you to grab this jiggy just sitting on Clanker's back. Which, I'm actually okay with, because unlike this atrocity in Mumbo's Mountain, you actually have to work for it. It also allows you to reach a jiggy in a higher section of the level by running up Clanker's tail. I know it looks easy, but running up Clanker's tail takes more dexterity than balancing three bouncy balls on your butt sheets. Another section it opens up is this pipe pathway, which you get by riding this bolt that's launched out of Clanker's blowhole. Figuring out you can ride on the bolt is such a cool moment. As soon as Clanker surfaces, you see it shooting off in the distance. And then, you approach it and think to yourself, what happens if I stand right here? And then it blasts you off into fucking space! And you're just like, YES! VIDEO GAMES! And believe it or not, this is not even the coolest thing you could do with Clanker's blowhole. Because like all good holes, you can go inside it. And this right here is Clanker's Cavern's Mona Lisa. The moment you realize there's a whole other section of the level inside Clanker's mechanical husk of a body, is the moment you realize this level is something special. And again, you're sitting there like, video games, come on. This is too much. Come on, video games. So, when you first enter Clanker's Cavern, it may seem small at first glance, but as soon as you raise Clanker up from the raw sewage, it completely changes the level in such a fun and creative way. Using Clanker's body parts to access different parts of the level and having his insides actually become part of the level is just so fucking cool. And honestly, I've been dying to talk about Clanker's insides. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's lube up 
and dive right in. So, if you thought the outside of a clanker was bad, then you clearly haven't seen his insides. Clanker's insides are a nightmarish hellscape. It's wet, bloody, and just overall icky, icky, icky. And he has these tentacles sprouting up everywhere, which honestly, he should have someone take a look at. Overall, it's not the nastiest thing I've been inside, but it's up there. So, aside from the disturbing decor, Clanker's inside houses a number of challenges that will reward you with some jiggies. This ring minigame in Clanker's belly is especially fun. There's also a section where you have to use the golden feathers to bypass the spinning blades of doom, which I can only assume are used to grind up Gruntilda's nasty trash. Poor Clanker, man. He doesn't even know he's just a glorified guard raider. So taking out of context, these little minigames that take place inside Clanker don't seem that great. I know. But that's just it. It's the context itself that makes them so fucking cool. You're not just swimming through rings. You're swimming through rings in the belly of a fucking mechanical whale shark straight from fucking hell. If you don't think that's awesome, I don't want to see what you're into. Side note. Have you ever noticed there's a weird amount of really good N64 games that involve sections where the player goes inside of a whale? Ocarina of Time? Paper Mario? Banjo-Kazooie? The list goes on and on. Aspiring game developers take notes. If you want to make a good game, just add in a whale section. Apparently, it's just that easy. So, when it comes down to it, Clanker's Cavern is just a really awesome level. It has everything you would want in a banjo level. It's got fun jiggies, it's got an awesome world to explore, it's got a clanker, it's got kinky sets dungeon chains. Hmm, yeah it does. But seriously, it's the atmosphere that really brings this level together. It's just so unique and disturbing. The first two levels in banjo are just so bright and colorful. They're like your mom bringing you hot chocolate and wrapping you in a warm blanket. And then you hit Clanker's Cavern. This level is like nothing else in the game. Banjo-Kazooie actually has a horror-themed level, but it's really just a fucking lie. Because Clanker's Cavern puts that shit to shame. And let's not forget about Clanker, the star of the show. The bell of the fucking ball. And the reason this level is so great. Just having him integrate into the exploration of the level makes Clanker's Cavern feel so unique when compared to other 3D platformers. I can't say I've ever played a game that uses a mechanical whale shark dumpster thing to alter and change a level, and for that reason alone, I'm giving Clanker's Cavern an A.